Hi, welcome back to Danny Harris Arts. In this video today, I'm gonna to be showing the tools that I use. I'm not gonna be carving. I'm gonna go over the basic tools uh, that I use, that I have in my arsenal that I use. These are just, uh, these are all my go-to items. Uh, I have a lot more than this, but this is just the ones that I pull out first. So uh, the ones you'll see me use the most. I'm gonna start, I uh, get the camera turned around here and get started with uh, my main workhorse here. So let me get the camera going around. Okay, I'm gonna start off talking about my main workhorse. Uh, this is a Fordham, and uh, this is an SR model. This is an older model, but it still works great. Uh, I bought it used. It's just a great tool, and I don't know how I got along without it. I used to, I used a Dremel for the first year or so. I finally broke down and bought this one good friend of mine David Okonski up in New York uh, found it from a lady that uh, he knew that uh, whose husband had passed away who was a carver so he went and checked it out it was in good working order she sold it to him fairly cheap he bought it and sent it to me uh, it came with the box and all the all the uh, pieces and bits that came with it originally came with it so I got the original box and uh, all the the tools and the uh, the grease, the, all the paperwork that that, was, that comes with them when they're new, but I got a super good deal on it. I think I paid, uh, I think it was like $150. Uh, David was good enough to purchase it, box it up, and send it to me. I paid him back, of course, but uh, I just appreciate him taking the time to go out of his way to do that and and get it for me. And new, the newer models in this model, the SR is uh they're about 250 dollars but this like i say this is an older one and uh but it has everything the new ones have it's got a forward and reverse button here uh this is a 1800 rpm it's a uh one six horsepower and it comes with came with a foot control and this is a variable speed so it's from stop to slower or to full speed and it was a game changer in my carving. So uh, it came with this, um, it came with this one. This is the H44T. It's the standard hand piece that come with them. And they come with different uh, size collets. And I had this one set up for quarter inch uh, shafts for all my quarter inch bits. And it takes a comes with a special tool to change it out with I'll show you this there's a hole here that you put the pin through and then there's a locking wrench here that you lock it down with and it's in there so um then the other hand piece that i have is this um h30 and this one has a, a keychuck type bit, uh, call it. It's not really a call it, it's a, a, a keychuck. And uh, this one will fit bits ranging from 3.30 seconds to 5.30 seconds. So most of my bits are 3.30 seconds or eighth inch shafts. So, and it's, they're easy to put in. Uh, just, you've probably seen me do this before. And it's locked in. I say it'll take anything in between from the small ones. This is a 332nd shaft. It's a little bit smaller than these other shafts. I don't know if that shows up on there, but it does. And I'm plan on, I say I keep this one set up for the quarter inch, and I just swap them out. There's another one that they make, and I don't remember the model number of it, but it's a it's a little bit thinner than this one. It's more of a pencil type and it'll let you get down a little closer to the work if you need to but uh and i may end up getting a couple of these uh, down the line but right now these two uh, do me well the other new tool that i got is this uh marathon micro motor and this guy right here was a uh, it's going to be a game changer for me as well uh, this is the actual motor, 
the, the motors in the handpiece, but it, it also takes the smaller shaft bits and this is easy to replace them. It's just a little twist here. Slide them in, lock it, it's in. Uh, this particular one comes with this little uh, adapter for uh, the smaller shaft and I take it out um, let me get it out of here take the adapter out for the eighth inch shaft bits so um, I'm going to end up ordering me some more of these because I know I'm going to lose it at some point I actually had it in these little bit holders here and I was moving it uh, into this uh, new room here that I'm using for uh, doing some of my work and I didn't realize it but I had dropped it. I just happened to look on the floor and this thing was <laughs> laying on the floor. If I had dropped that outside of my porch, it had been gone. So, but I'll leave it locked inside the the tool right now. But this guy's, uh, uh, it also comes with a foot controller. Oh, where's it at? Uh, this one is just an old and off. Um, it doesn't control the speed. The speed control is here. And this one, spins up to 35,000 RPMs. Now, some of these bits, you don't want to run at that high speed. You want to make sure that the bits that you're using are, are uh, rated for that high of a speed. If not, they, they could potentially fly, fly apart on you, so you want to be careful with that. And this is the K35 series, K35 cube. This is where you put the foot control in, but you can also control it just from the... Um, side here as well if you like I didn't buy this uh, I actually want I was gonna buy one but I actually won this one through Bearwood Supply Company they have uh, several Facebook posts or Facebook groups that I'm in and there's a uh, there's one that's called power carving power carving for newbies and wood carving for beginners and I'm in all three groups, but uh, and I don't remember which one it was, but they have like a quarterly contest and they let you post a picture of some of your work and then all, all the group members vote on it. And the one that gets the most votes win a prize. And this time, this last time on the one that I entered, just happened to be this um, uh, marathon. So I was fortunate enough to win, to win it just off of a uh, carving that I did. Now, like I say, I was, Planning on buying one, so that that came in handy. What I use next, one of my work uh, horses, is uh, the wood burners. And uh, this particular one is a um, razor tip, and this is the first one I bought. And it has the this is the BPH pin that that you can buy uh, optional, and it but it allows you to change out the tips. And I make a lot of my own tips, uh, scale tips. So, and I use this primarily for uh, burning scales on the fish, but I also have some tips that I can burn detail around the gills and, uh, and fins with. So I use that quite a bit. Now I am gonna be purchasing a coal wood. From, from everything I've read and people I've talked to now, the coal woods are a little bit more reliable and a little more consistent on their temperature range. And uh, th I mean, this has been a good unit. Uh, it's done me, I mean, it's worked for me. I, I do have problems with the temperature range a little bit, but it's it's not a make or break deal. Uh, like I say, it's worked fine. The only thing I don't like about the cold woods is they don't have pins with interchangeable tips, but they make an adapter that you can plug into the beat to the razor tip BPH that'll attach it to the coal wood so that's what I'll be doing because I make my own tips that's the only reason I bought that you can buy the pins that have the tips in them but I prefer doing it like this but like I say right now this is what I'm using hopefully before the next project I'll have me a coal wood uh, coming up so um, that's gonna bring me to uh, the bits and burrs that I use and 
I used mostly cuts all. And now I bought some before Bear Woods came along. I'm, if I haven't mentioned it yet, I'm an affiliate with Bear Woods Supplier Company. So anything I have here, you can purchase yourself from Bear Woods. And if you use my name, Danny, in a promo in the promo code, you can save five percent on your purchases. And that's uh, there's no limit or uh, range in the prices and what you have to spend and you can get that uh, discount every time you make a purchase just by using my name uh, in the promo code. Another good thing about it is Bear Woods is a Canadian company so if you live in the States and you purchase from them uh, Bear Woods don't charge tax on it so it's kind of like getting another discount. <laughs> so uh, but if you have any any need uh, go check them out if you're a carver uh, they carry a whole line of, of products uh, like this marathon high-speed rotary tool they carry the cold wood burners they carry cuts off bits and they have diamond bits and they also um, have uh, scroll saws and band saws and just a whole litany of uh, tools and equipment for the wood carver so uh, go check them out i had already bought some cuts all bits from cuts all once i became an affiliate with bear woods i started buying through them because i, I get a little discount there too as well but i started buying all my uh, cuts all bits these newer ones the bigger ones here i think i, I had originally bought uh, these two from cuts all and i think i bought my first set of eighth inch of these coarse bits from cuts all and then everything else I've, the diamond bits and all the other bits I have uh, came from uh, Bear Woods but I had bought um, this quarter inch ball nose there was some teeth missing off of it I sent it back to cuts all and um, they sent me two <laughs> so I got two of them I called them and said, "Hey, you you sent me two, and they said, "Well, and they're you know that's okay. Don't worry about it. Just keep it." So uh, I was thankful for the, thankful for that. But uh, anyway, so yeah, this is a uh, this quarter inch ball nose is pretty much my go to bit for hogging off and getting the rough shape done quick uh, because this. This bit here, this extra course, will definitely remove some wood fast. It comes in a medium and a fine. I, I didn't get the medium because once I get the shape down, I switch over to the fine and it still removes a lot of wood. It just takes out a lot of the tool marks. This one leaves, so but I'm able to take the tool marks that this leaves are easily sanded down. So what I have here in the quarter inch shaft is uh, the sphere, the ball nose cylinder, the tapered, and the flame burr. Now these are, um, I use all these when I'm shaping the piece. They, they move a lot of wood fast also. And then I have the same bits in eighth inch shaft The only one I don't have, I don't have this cone, inverted cone in the quarter inch. I'd like to get one, uh, but that's useful also. So, uh, but these are like, like I say, these are my go-to bits. I got some paint on that one. And then these are the same, set these down. These are just the extra coarse, the little ball nose, the little baby one. <laughs> and then, um, the flame burr and a tapered burr, and then a just a cylinder. And these are this is a flame burr and a sphere and a medium grit. Now I don't use these as much um, because I can, like, say I can go from this extra coarse to this fine, and and then very little sanding to remove the the uh, tool marks. And like, and again, these, even though it says fine, it still removes a lot of wood quick. So, and I've got a couple others that I use occasionally. These are, oh, I forgot the name of these, uh, Typhoon. I'll get it out in a minute. And 
These, uh, I bought this one, but this one actually came, was in the kit when I bought the Fordham. Uh, that's not one that normally comes with it, but it was in there. I guess the guy had bought it. And I like this one. It's a little bit finer than this one. And sometimes I'll use this one as a, to finish up before I start sanding. It just depends on what uh, the project is I'm working on. But I like, I think I prefer the cuts all better. Uh, there's a lot of guys that like the Typhoon that swear by it and they're well made, but I, I just prefer the cuts all. Uh, a couple other things that I use quite a bit are um, diamond bits that you can also get at Bear Woods. And I've used basically the same size, uh, shapes, uh, flame burrs, balls, and then I have these uh, flat discs that I use. And they've got some inverted cones. And I'll show you this here, this little caddy that I got. So you can see all the diamond burrs that I got on here. And I don't use them all. I mean, I do go through and uh, like I got several different sizes of the ball, several different sizes of the flame burr, and then the shafts, and then um, there's some that are these little needle shaped tips. These come in handy a lot and I use them quite a bit and I got different sizes of those. But uh, the diamond burrs that, that I buy are relatively inexpensive. I usually buy them in kits. And now uh, you can spend a lot of money on the burrs, on the diamonds. These are, like I say, relatively inexpensive. 15, 20 bucks for, a, you know, like a 10 piece kit or a 10 piece set. But, and you can buy well-made Swiss diamond tips and then you may pay five or six dollars a bit for them and they may last longer but I think since I don't use them on metal I, I've never had to replace one I've never had one go out or go bad on me uh, using them on wood so I think they eventually will but so far I haven't had any that's that's uh, that I've had to replace or throw away because they weren't any good anymore a couple other things that I use that I've use quite a bit is uh, these padded drum sanders and these come from MDH wood carving supply and uh, this is a three quarter or a, yeah three quarter inch and it's padded and it's uh, three inches long and you can replace sandpaper on these and I got two of these and I keep one loaded with with a fine 220 grit and another one loaded with like a 80 grit and the same with these it's just a little bit smaller version I've got like three of these, and I've, uh, these are good for getting into tighter spots and smaller projects. I keep a coarse, medium, and a fine loaded sandpaper, and it, the sandpaper lasts quite a bit. And you have to use paper on these. You can't, I mean, uh, uh, emery cloth. You can't use paper back paper on these because they'll just fly apart on you. So. The sandpaper I use on these is actually emery cloth, so it's a, it's a cloth back. And this little guy here is a homemade do-it-yourself Scotch-Brite polisher that I made. Uh, it's a deburring tool. And I've got a video on how I make these, and I use these to, uh, it's not really a sander, but it's uh, it'll help deburr and smooth out like fins after I've carved the fins or the scales it'll it'll help smooth them out this was a little bit bigger they get wore down a little bit as you use them but and you can buy smaller ones that I don't have any out but there's some that are tiny but they they don't last long at all so have and I don't use these very much uh, these flex cut knives and this is the only two I have but I do use it for doing some hand detail around gills and what couple ducks that I've done they're handy for cutting around feathers and I use this one a lot cutting around the gill detail uh, the relief for the gills so um, but again Bear Woods sells these flex cut knives uh, let's see here oh let me talk about airbrush a minute I use this um, 
watt of clips and it's a gravity feed this is about a I think I paid 130 bucks for this guy here and it gets down to some pretty fine detail and I can take this uh, nozzle off turn the pressure down and I can get down in some pretty hairline detail with that but I don't do much detailing with this uh, I use the airbrush mainly to put on the base coats and uh, I use it some for some detailing but most of the detailing I do I do by hand uh, but I do use the airbrush quite a bit in uh, putting on my base layers of, of color this thing here is just a it's kind of an inline moisture trap because I use a shop compressor that's um, that stays out in my shop and it uh, builds up a lot of moisture sometimes condensation in the tank and every once in a while it'll it'll make it to this end of the hose and but it gets trapped in here and I can blow it out by just pushing that little valve there plus it's a it's actually a pretty good decent little handhold to uh, to grip gives me a little bit better hold my big sausage fingers I've used a uh, badger airbrushes in the past with that are siphon feed but I was uh, I haven't used them on any of my wood carvings because you just ha you have to mix up too much paint in them and a lot of times I'm only dealing with just a few drops of paint so that's where the gravity feed comes in handy because it's right there and it comes right into the air mix chamber whereas a gravity feed I mean a siphon feed you have to have more paint and you have to mix up more paint and it's just I'd rather do the gravity feed so let's see here and the paints that I use are oops are just basic uh, acrylic that I get from Hobby Lobby and they have several band brands there's folk art deco art this one is uh, just craft paint uh, but there's a couple others they have and it's fairly liquid and they have a wide range of colors and they're cheap <laughs> these are roughly 99 cents a bottle and i can find them on sale for half off or buy one get one free kind of thing now i do use i do use some airbrush paint as well i've got a few colors of this comart that i use and i also use some createx paints um, now these same size bottles are seven bucks compared to a dollar but there's just some of these colors createx colors that just work better than the uh the acrylic there but i do you there's they're all acrylics and then this com art paint i've got uh, several colors in that that i use for base colors but it's also a good paint let's see i think oh let me talk about my glasses here a minute I uh, only use these for uh, when I'm painting. My eyes aren't what they used to be. But I bought this kit. Now, I, I forget where I bought this one. It was online. But you can buy this on Amazon. And I forget what it's called. But if you just... Uh, I'll leave a link. I'll find the link and I'll leave it in the description below. But I like it because it has... Uh, it comes with a, a set of eyepieces. I don't know where the box is for them but i think there's five five different power levels and I'm, right now i've got a this one is a two and a half power i found that this one brings the work up close to me without having to bring it right up in my face and it does have a light on it and uh which is it's actually pretty bright this particular run one runs off of three double a batteries uh, but I've seen them also that have, you just hook them up to a USB charger and you can charge an internal battery. I don't know how long they last, uh, but I've seen these on Amazon and I think they're about $15. But I like these because they, they wear like glasses and I can see around me and, and they're fully adjustable. I mean, you can bring it as close to your eyes or as far from your eyes as you want. I just, these were the best ones I've bought so far. And, and a good price so um, let's see 
I think that's going to cover just about everything. And I use a wide variety of brushes because I, I do all my hand painting, the detail work with uh, by hand. And then I also use these little uh, micro applicators. And they're just a, basically a little, little Q-tip, little micro Q-tip. And I got a couple extra sizes. There's one, there's one's a little bit bigger, one's a little bit tighter, but these come in handy for doing detail work, uh, scale tipping. And I bought these last year at the World Taxidermy and Fish Carving Championship trade show from Matuska Taxidermy. I think you can find these on Amazon as well. I went to the trade show in Matuska's uh, booth and they had these there and I bought them. They're like uh, eight and a half dollars for this. Uh, I don't remember how many was in there. I've only used about half of them in a year, so I think that's about it. Of course, I use, uh, I have a bandsaw out in my shop that I use. I've got a 14 inch bandsaw and a nine inch bandsaw that I use for cutting out the fins and that sort of thing. And I've got a, uh, a four by eight belt sander that I use um, occasionally. But other than that, the only other thing that I can recommend is uh, just go to bearwoods.com if you need anything. And like I say, check them out. They're cuts all bits. They have a whole line of products for the wood carvers. So go check them out. Okay, that's going to be it for this video. I just wanted to go over some of the tools that I use on my, on my carvings. Uh, everything you've seen here today in this video or tools that I use on every carving that I do. So at some point, everything that I showed you here today gets pulled out and used on, on a carving. Everything from this uh, this Marathon high speed rotary tool, the cuts all bits, the diamond bits, the flex cut knives. Uh, right now it's a razor tip wood burner, but I am gonna be getting a coal wood pretty soon from, uh, from Bearwoods as well. Uh, so go check them out uh, at bearwood.com. And if, you, if there's anything you want to purchase, be sure and use my name, Danny, and the promo code, and that'll get you 5% off. And it also gives me a little bit of kickback also and uh, helps me out. So I'd appreciate if you go check them out. One of the things I didn't talk about today that I should have covered and I should talk about more is safety. And, uh, and safety glasses, that's a, that's a given, especially when you're using this high-speed tools with big bits. Got a lot of sawdust flying. I couldn't tell you how many times I feel stuff hitting me in the face when I'm carving. I should wear a mask more than I do. Uh, when I'm using these bits, sometimes when I'm really hogging off, I'll wear a mask to uh, just keep from breathing some of that in. Uh, but I don't wear one as often as I should. Uh, the other thing is a good quality leather apron. I learned the hard way to wear an apron. <laughs> The very first carving that I was doing, I mean, the very first project that I ever worked on with a Dremel, I'm carving away and I was using a, a tapered cuts all bit. Might've been this very one, I can't remember. Um, but I'm carving away and it slipped and it caught my shirt and it instantly in a microsecond wrapped up and bogged down and shut off, but not before it pulled out a, a nickel sized spot in my hair ripped two big holes in my shirt and it got a little skin <laughs> and it it scared me because it hurt <laughs> but i unwrapped it and looked and saw the holes and i got lucky uh, if it had to bog down and shut down by being wrapped up it could have done a lot more damage and all that could have been avoided just by wearing a, a leather apron and um, i went that night on facebook marketplace and found this one guy had uh, been hanging up in his shop forever. He'd bought a new one and that just been hanging around collecting dust. So I got that one for 20 bucks and it's a good heavy duty. It's a good heavy leather apron and don't don't skimp and buy a cloth apron. If At the very least buy you a good heavy duty canvas apron, uh, but you, you can't go wrong with the leather. Um, a good one like this would cost you new probably $60, $70. You could pay more if you want, but uh, just a good quality, heavy duty leather apron will save you 
a lot of heartache, I promise you. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave for me in the comment section below. And if you're new to the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you consider subscribing and give me a thumbs up if you like these videos. And I'll see you guys on the next project.